Hi, I'm Hoppy. And I'm Tao. And this is our home called Melangeth. And we live at the Lamas Eco Village in Pembrokeshire, Wales. If you enjoy beautiful, handmade, sustainable things, then you will love today's sponsor, Truewood. Truewood creates unique, 100% real wood watches and accessories with a modern, sustainable style. Truewood offers free worldwide shipping and plants 10 trees with every order. And for a limited time only, use our exclusive discount code FLORB for 10% off any of their wood watches and sustainable accessories. Click the link in the description to activate your discount. The Lamas Eco Village is a collective of off-grid small holding. It took us four years to buy the land and to get planning permission from the government. That happened in 2009, so we've now been here 10 years on the ground. I've lived in alternative communities across West Wales all my adult life. I had a thriving therapy business. Then when we got together, we lived in a chalet community in Swansea. And then just one day out of the blue, around my 40th birthday, I just suddenly felt this, it was like a, like a, like a bell just going, doing, doing, doing. it's time to move to Pembrokeshire. That's we true. were taking overgrazed blank fields that were previously grazed for 25 years by sheep and we were transforming them into this kind of mosaic of ecosystems. In the beginning, you know, we didn't have Wi-Fi, we didn't have, we didn't even have toilets, we didn't even have water, like it was a bare field, you know, a bare bunch of fields. We had three little touring caravans and we just built this, this building within a year. You are just about to enter the place of the Sweet Angel, otherwise known as Melangash, at the Lamas Eco Village. Come with me. So I want to show you, first of all, this little building. It was built for our firewood store, and it's just made with Douglas fir, and it's a solar dryer, which has a gap underneath and an airflow that gets drawn up and then dries all the timber. So this one is probably one of our most recent additions. It started with a kit cabin. So we bought this cabin for cheap, and then we realized why it was for cheap when we built it, because it started leaking. But what that led to was to wrap it around three sides. So we put on this conservatory, and we use recycled windows all the way around. If you have a look at the floor, we've got all these beautiful, beautiful ocean-worn slates, which were collected from a local beach. We've sculpted all the pieces of wood, and this is all from timber from our woodland. And then everything, the plates, the cups, everything is recycled. You know, we've picked them up from charity shops and stuff. And then this is the original cabin here. And then we've got a bedroom in here for people, for guests when they come to stay. There was a, an original door here where we've got the portal. And we realized that if we were gonna make this into a, a space for people to stay, we needed to take that door out because we wanted to have a bathroom access for people. So we moved the door. So we recut the door, rehung the door. We put the same mandala pattern in the step as the uh, porthole. And then we made a really beautiful bathroom. And so this is the bathroom in here. It's got a beautiful Moroccan sink that I got off eBay. And this shower is heated by the sun. So we can only have a shower in there when it's really loads and loads of sunshine and I'll show you the panels of how we do that. This is our passive solar heating system. This is what heats our water in our shower. So that's this building. So now I want to show you our compost toilet. We had a flat area here in between the house and this space here and I really wanted to have a decent toilet for people to come into when they were coming to stay. And we have two chambers. When this chamber is full, it'll sit for about two years while we fill that chamber up. So it's got two years to be converted into good usable soil. So this is our animal barn. We have our freezer, we have 
our storage for vegetables. And then the top part is where we store all our hay for our goats. Right now we've got goats as our big animals. This is where the goats live. So we collect goat's milk. We always leave enough for the babies. The babies come out after we've taken what we need for the day. And then they help themselves to mama's milk. And then we've got a little shower room there, which was our original milking parlor for the cows, um, which has now turned into our volunteer showering space. So you can shower with the goats. This was gonna be our original forever home, but as things have evolved, at this point in time, we're developing it as the Lamas Earth Center, a center for transformation and healing. So this is just the first part of quite a big project. So we've got a wraparound hall that's yet to be built. And we've got a sound healing temple and ceremonial space, which will be above. So this is our home. This is where we live. It's made with Douglas fir. It's raised off the ground. We've got 15 of these little pillars. We cast those pillars out of the center of a tractor wheel. We dug 15 holes into bedrock and then we cast cement into that. So if this building were taken away, all that would be left is 15 pads, little circles of cement, that's it. So it really is, in terms of its footprint on the land, it's really low impact. All the windows for this building are recycled glass. We also designed the building to have really wide eaves to keep the water runoff away from the building. We have a channel at the back of the building here which has actually fed the whole of the water flow through our plot. Hey, welcome to our house, coming in. So um, first we've got our lobby room. Over here we've got our battery reserve. This takes the power from the solar panels and store it. I've got a 24 volt system, there's my reading there. Batteries are quite happy, healthy at the moment. This is our, our main living space in here. So we've got our kitchen, very much a working kitchen. So we've got things like, this is our blueberry jam, various ointments, herbs, potions. We've got our range, which we light in the winter, and we cook on in the winter. We're blessed in that our spring water comes from a spring, we, sh we share a spring with lots of nearby farms. We've got our wood burner, which is our main source of heat in the winter. Upstairs, we've got our, our bedroom, which is kind of like a loft bedroom. In terms of construction, this is basically a stud frame, very simple barn. Now, when we arrived here on the land, we were living in three small caravans. We needed to get our family into accommodation very quickly. So this space was designed to be quick to build. In essence, we put in 15 pad foundations. I built a deck and then each of the four walls was built flat, raised into place, and then a rafter system on the roof. With ties, round with ties above me here to tie the walls in together and then the floor of our bedroom over there acting as ties. Very straightforward. In terms of the, the materials, it's basically made of six by two. There's a six by two structure, uh, breather membrane on the outside, sheep's wool insulation, 150 mil throughout. And then we've got lath and plaster on the inside, a lime plaster here on the walls, and a gypsum plaster on the roof, because gypsum plaster is sticks better and works better on a roof. This is Hoppy's sound healing room. So this is where she does her sound therapy. And then we have a, a pantry in here where we process milk, we have a fridge, and then we kind of store food and equipment there as well. In terms of composting, we split the food we have raw food, which goes into the compost heaps. The compost heaps are at the center of our small holding. Much of my life revolves around building compost, building soil. So that's all important kind of minerals and nutrients that goes into that process. The cooked food is trickier to deal with. Um, we actually feed that to the pig. Um, we've got a pig on site. Why? Because of rats, basically. Cooked food in compost is a recipe for a rat infestation. So I, so I separate them out and that's how I deal with the compost.
I grew up in the mainstream. I grew up in suburbia, and my dad was an accountant. My mum was a housewife, and I had a very ordinary upbringing. But I never really felt rooted. And it wasn't until I started living on the land that I discovered roots. You know, I don't think I've ever felt more empowered. My supermarket is a garden, and my pharmacy is my herb garden. I love that. I love that. And that's how it probably always was life before the Industrial Revolution. But the beauty is that using technologies that we have now, like hydropower, solar power, we can live a modern day life, but totally integrated with nature. If you're rooted enough into the landscape, where you by no know that the land will support you with clean water, with good food, with good solid shelter, with a bit of livelihood. You know, if you've got that kind of base, you then have an incredible freedom and space about your life. You're not constrained by heavy mortgages or nine to five jobs or, or anything like that. You've just got a lot of space to explore. Being rooted in the land gives an incredible sense of resilience, an incredible sense of empowerment. <laughs>